Hello chemistry students. Uh, in this video I will do a walkthrough of our calculations for the empirical formula of zinc chloride lab. I've just started with some sample data that might be similar to what you had uh, when you actually did the lab. So what we're going to try to do is move between the data and the calculations. Okay, And let's get started. So note we do have the mass of our empty beaker. Um, if I want to represent that as a picture, I've got my empty beaker. And I care about that because I usually end up subtracting that mass out of my subsequent measurements. Okay. So on day one, pretty simple procedure, right? We took our beaker and we added some zinc pieces, those square pieces, right? Several of them. And of course the mass went up when we added those pieces. So what I really care about those two measurements is how much zinc did I end up adding to the beaker. So I just want to take 54. Try to get that in a little bit better focus for you. Fifty-four point zero four two. Subtract out the empty beaker mass, fifty-one point four four three, and my mass of zinc is going to be two point five nine nine. Now, if I carry that over to this sheet, again, it was two point five nine nine. That is how much zinc, I assume, gets incorporated into the product. So 2.599 grams. Okay. All right, back to my data. So what did I do on day two? I ran the reaction, right? I put some HCl, hydrochloric acid, in with the zinc. It bubbled away and reacted, and it changed into zinc chloride. So now my empty beaker has some stuff in it, and that stuff is some zinc atoms and some chlorine atoms that have come together in some particular ratio. Also, at first, there was some H2O that got absorbed from the air. And so the purpose of these steps was to heat and drive off that H2O so that when you're done, you just have your beaker and zinc chloride product. So again, if I want to know my zinc chloride product, I want to take the mass of the beaker, including the product, and subtract out the empty beaker mass. Let's do that. So 56.815 was my final lowest measurement. I assumed I was driving off water between each of these steps. I subtract out my empty beaker mass, and I get 5.372 grams. Again, I subtracted out the beaker, so what I measured here is my product. Okay, now continuing with my calculations. This would be the product, this would include the zinc and the chlorine that is now bonded together. I already assumed that the zinc that I have in this total is from the zinc that I started with. So the mass of chlorine in product would be the difference between these, right? So again, I'm going to go to my calculator. I already have 5.372 in there. I'm going to subtract the zinc. And now I have my mass of chlorine. Okay. Now, if you didn't know any chemistry, you might think, oh, these masses are pretty similar. It must be a one-to-one -one ratio from zinc to chlorine. But that's not correct. A, an atom of zinc has a different mass than an atom of chlorine. So we need to count these up, and our counting unit is um, moles, right? So I need to do a conversion of grams to moles before I can say anything about how the atoms are actually coming together. So for my moles of zinc, I'm going to take my mass of zinc, I'm 
I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor that will cancel grams of zinc and end up in moles of zinc. All right. To do that, I need to go to the periodic table and look up the molar mass. Zinc is atomic number 30, and I have a value of 65.39 grams is equivalent to one mole of zinc. So my grams of zinc will cancel and I'll end up in moles. Okay, so on my calculator I am going to take 2.59 I'm going to divide by 65.39 to get my mole amount. I am going to choose to keep four significant digits because my measurements have four significant digits this particular molar mass has four significant digits. I need to remember that leading zeros are not significant. So I'm going to keep 0 0.03961. I'm going to round up that last digit. So 0 0.03961 moles of zinc. That, in essence, is counting up how much, how many atoms of zinc I have. Similar calculation for chlorine. I assumed that I had 2.773 grams of chlorine. There will be a different conversion factor for chlorine because an atom of chlorine has a different mass than an atom of zinc, and a mole of chlorine has a different mass than a mole of zinc. Again, I want grams of chlorine to cancel. I want to end up in moles, my counting unit. Chlorine is atomic number 17. The molar mass is 35.45 grams in one mole. So grams will cancel. My math is to take 2.773. Yes, I can multiply it by one but I'm really taking 2.773 dividing by 35.45. Let's do that. 2.773 divided by 35.45 is a value. I'm going to keep four digits. Again, leading zeros are not significant. So I get 0.078 2, 2. Now, these units, moles, actually do count up the atoms. And just by looking at it, I can see that this 0.78-ish value is about double the 0.39-ish value. That's a good thing. When you do an empirical formula problem, you want to have a whole number ratio. So, next line says, what is the ratio of chlorine moles, that's the larger amount, to zinc moles, that's the smaller amount? It says, report decimal value with correct sig figs. So what I really want to do is take the bigger number, the 0 0.07822 number, and divide by 0 0.03961. And if I keep four digits, again, I'm taking the bigger value compared to the smaller value, I'm going to keep 1.975 to 1, because I've divided that out next to each other. So that is the chlorine amount of moles as it compares to the zinc amount very, very close to a 2 to 1 ratio. So this is actually quite a good result. We make the assumption there's a little bit of measurement error in here. Maybe the product wasn't completely dry. Maybe there was a secondary reaction that happened. I know that if I'm reasoning this out, if it's 1.975 moles of chlorine to 1 mole of zinc, that's pretty darn close to two coming together with one. If the moles are coming together in that ratio, the atoms are coming together in that ratio. So I'm going to assume 
that it is a 2 to 1 ratio. Again, the bigger mole amount was with the chlorine, so it's 2 chlorine coming together with 1 zinc. Now the formula of zinc chlorine, if you remember back to your study of ionic compounds, the metal is always listed first. And remember, the zinc was the one that had less, less moles. It's the one that has a, a subscript of 1, except in chemistry, when there's a subscript of 1, we don't write it. It's the chlorine atoms that had twice as many moles, and we assume twice as many atoms. Okay. Hopefully, your result came out close to this. If you don't have close to a 2 to 1 ratio, there's something wrong, either with your calculations or maybe something went wrong in the lab with your measurements. Hopefully that helps you figure out how to do your calculations for the empirical formula of zinc lab.